Hey guys, and welcome to Book Review Friday. I know, I know, it's been like two weeks since I filmed a Book Review Friday, but we are back, we are ready to rock, and we're back to our regular scheduled programming. So today's book is Night Creepers by David Irons. Now, I just wanna say that I was sent this book and another book by David Irons himself, which is so sweet. Thank you so much for sending me your books. I really appreciate it but I just want to let you guys know just because I was sent the book doesn't mean that I'm going to hold back on my thoughts or I'm going to give it a positive review just because of that. I genuinely read the books and give the review that I think they deserve. Now before we get into the book I just want to mention some things that I think are so freaking cool that uh, David Irons did. One, he signed the book which I know that sounds like such a little thing, but honestly, I love when people sign the books and then send them to me. If you are going to send me a book, please sign it. I think that is just so cool. I just love having that. I think it's just a nice little touch to have. I just, I don't know. I just love having that. Another thing is he sent me these cool posters for his books. They are two for each book. The other two are over there, but I'm not talking about that book, so I'm only showing these. But like, look at how cool this is. It's like an actual movie poster for his book. Look at how freaking cool that is. And then there's another one, like, look. Look at how cool these are. I'm obsessed. I love this so much. It's such a cool little touch. Thank you so much for sending these to me because I actually want to frame them and put them up. I think they're so they're so cool. I love this. It's so awesome. Anyways, enough yip yapping. Let's get talking about the book. So let's start with the cover. I love his covers. The other book is beautiful too, but this one is so cool. I love the 80s vibe that he is going for. He told me that these are 80s kind of vibed horror books, which I think is really awesome. I like 80s horror. It's very different than horror nowadays, which I think is fun, but it is a soft matte touch cover, which, you know, I love. I love the greens in this cover. I'm a green person. I love the color green, and these shades of greens are very eye-catching to me, so I love that. hate the spider, but um, <laughs> we'll get into that when I talk later on about the plot because, uh, <clears throat> I'm terrified of bugs and spiders and uh, that's a central theme of this book as you can tell by the name Night Creepers. <laughs> Anyways, I just think the cover is really, really pretty. I like up here it says you are what they eat. That's a thing that they talk about in the book, which I think is cool. Let me read you the back. Seven strangers are asked to attend the funeral and will reading of the affluent Gregory Blitzer, a man who the attendees only thing in common is the mutual hatred they had for him in life. While at the funeral's remote church setting, they soon find themselves trapped inside, unable to escape. Forced to open Gregory's coffin, they find no body inside, only a ragged torn out hole leading to the catacombs beneath the graveyard. Something has been living underground, something that's been spawning, something that's hungry. You are what they eat, which, <laughs> ooh, hmm. spoiler, I really did like this book. I just, um, I have a bug thing, so we'll talk more about that. Let me do a summary for you guys. The book begins with Jennifer. Jennifer is the main character of the book. And this is when she is a child. And the scene is she's getting bullied by two other children and they end up stuffing her inside a locker. And uh, there are spiders <laughs> inside of the locker. Now, um, that's one of my biggest fears. So um, that scene made me wanna cry because um, I hate spiders. <laughs> I really hate spiders. Jennifer is able to get herself out of the locker. She finds a thick card stuffed in the back of the locker and she is able to slip that inside of the lock and just kind of like pop it open. And when she gets out, she looks down at the card and sees it's like a tarot card of some sorts, 
with a winking devil face on it. Fast forward to uh, the present day, which is 2018 in the book, and Jennifer is working at Gregory Blitzer's funeral home, and she hates it there. Allison is her manager, and she's a very uptight woman, and she is obsessed with Gregory Blitzer. She worships the ground that man walks on. One day when Jennifer and Allison are working at the funeral home, they see Gregory Blitzer coming inside when he is smashed by a car. This is when seven people are asked to attend Gregory's funeral and will reading. Each person hates him for very different reasons, but they all very, very much hate Gregory Blitzer. Christy is Gregory's ex-wife and she is very happy he is dead. She hates him and she just recently divorced him. Their divorce was very, very messy and she took half of everything he owns. Kelly is Christy's 10 year old daughter from another marriage and she's honestly just trying to keep her mom in check. Her mom's a little bit of a a wild card. Her 10 year old daughter is pretty much the parent in this situation and she's kind of just there to uh, stop her mom from doing crazy things which actually doesn't really work because her mom does them anyways. Allison is the only one who probably doesn't hate Gregory. She is sobbing and crying. She's distraught that this wonderful good man has been removed from the earth. She is just devastated. She's also very annoying, but we'll get into that too. Alex was Christie's lawyer for the divorce and he hates Gregory because of a deal that went sour about 20 years ago. So he still holds that grudge on Gregory. Matt was Christie's PI who she hired to dig up all the dirt on Gregory for the divorce. He's probably the only one who's not really quite sure why he's there. He doesn't really have any bad blood with this man because he never really dealt with him face to face because he's a PI. So he did everything secretively. So he's not really sure why he's there. And of course there's Jennifer who is not really sure why she's there either. Uh, her relationship with Gregory wasn't great, obviously. She did not like him as a boss. They also had a little situation happened um, that I'm not gonna talk about because if you wanna read the book, then you'll find out then. But uh, she's not really sure why she's there, but she uh, just decided to show up because she thinks he's gonna leave her some money, which is a reason why most of the people showed up. <laughs> Lastly, there is the priest, who is also the same priest who wed Christy and Gregory. He's not really sure why he's there, except for he is the one that's supposed to conduct the funeral and do the will reading that Gregory uh, wanted him to do. They all arrive at this very remote, very strange church. And when they get inside, they realize there is no way out. They cannot get out. The doors do not have handles and the ones that do have handles uh, are all bricked up, so you can't go anywhere. They're just stuck. Of course, panic ensues and everyone is freaking out. They do not know what to do. Uh, they feel very trapped. Obviously, they're stuck inside this church with random people for a man they all hate. So Gregory's coffin is then opened and that's when everyone realizes that he is not inside of the coffin and there is just this huge, weird hole at the bottom. They decide the only way to get out is to climb down this hole and find another way, which <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. When they went in the hole, I was, um, it's like in that part in a scary movie when you're watching and you're yelling at someone, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know, that's what I was thinking when they went, when they went in the hole. There is a graveyard at the front of the church they saw when they were coming in. And when they go down in the hole, they realize they are in the catacombs for that graveyard. And of course, uh, they are not alone down there. Not at all. And thus begins a fight for survival. Okay, so that's pretty much the plot. There is more, obviously, 
to the story but I don't want to give too too much away because I think this book is a really good read and I think if it sounds like something that you would like to read I don't want to give too much away. Let me just say that with a name like Night Creepers I knew that this was gonna involve bugs especially from the first scene where she gets shoved into a locker and there are spiders. <laughs> um <laughs> I was not expecting the level of bug that actually happened <laughs> very very disturbing very disturbing i know that it's like very stereotypical for girls to hate bugs or people in general to hate bugs bugs are just like a thing i genuinely hate bugs i mean like i scream and cry when i see spiders i can't i can't go near them i genuinely have panic attacks it's not good <laughs> it's it's a lot i just hate bugs i don't like being outside because bugs are outside so i'm not a very good outdoorsy person because bugs are outdoors but um i just i hate bugs so this book is literally my worst nightmare if this was my life i don't think i would be able to fight i think i would be crawled up in a corner crying I told my boyfriend while I was reading this, I would rather be dealing with a serial killer than these bugs. I mean, I would like to deal with neither of them, obviously, but I at least think I could get myself under control with a serial killer, but bugs, I don't think so. I think if you hate bugs like I do, like if you just genuinely are scared of bugs, this book is definitely gonna be scary to you because <laughs> It was freaky for me. It really genuinely made me like, ugh, like, you know, like freak out because I just, I don't like bugs. There's also a really cool nursery rhyme song that's repeated several times in the book. It's actually really creepy. Uh, it really did actually make me kind of like, ooh, like if I heard children singing this, I think I would like, it'd be like that scene in like the Freddy Krueger movies where the kids are like, what? to you know that kind of thing like it gives me that kind of that kind of vibe which is like cool but creepy i really love the style that this book is written in it's a very easy read very like light it's only 173 pages i believe so it's very quick very easy to just jump right into it and get it going like i said before i love the 80s vibe that he has going on the other book is just as like 80s feeling and I can't wait to read that because I really just like I like that kind of thing I just love older horror like that the 80s feel like I like bringing it back with like a modern touch which is what he does and I really enjoyed that the characters were very interesting some in particular I was always changing my opinion on I couldn't tell if I liked them or if I hated them and they they really did evolve as the book went on, which I appreciate because I do like character development, you know, good character development at least. And there were some characters that I was just like, oh, you're not like I thought you were. Especially Christy. At the beginning of the book, she comes off very cold, harsh, uh, narcissistic, gold digger kind of type. She's very much that personality but as the book goes on I really saw a different side of her and I really really liked that. Her character development was the best by far. There is one character that I hated the entire time. <clears throat> Allison. Can't stand her. She was so annoying uh, from the very beginning to the very end. I hated her guts. The ending is hard to say if I liked it or if I hated it because I really really liked the ending. I really liked the ending. It was very satisfying except for one part. There is one part that I feel like if it hadn't happened, I would have been more positive about the ending. I get why he did it. I get why he did it, but I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy. It made me very sad. It made me very sad. Overall, I really, really liked the book. It's very different from the usual type of horror that I read, which I think is very nice i like having a change of pace it was good to just have something a little different the bug thing really got me and there's more to it than just bugs it's like a whole it's like a whole thing which i don't want to go into because it'll spoil things but the bug aspect is very very like 
cool and unique and very different which I really really liked. So yes I do definitely recommend this book. I think it would be really cool to check out. Uh, I will leave a link so you can get the book and it will be down in the description so if you feel like this is something you would like to check out then you can go ahead and get it. Thank you again to David Irons for sending me his books and the other one I will review soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!